Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about bringing open source to game development and the games industry overall. My name is April Kyle Massey, and I work in the open source programs office at Google. And I have the privilege of working with all of our Google Cloud for Games open source projects. Um, you can find me on the internet and just about everywhere else, as this is not April. So please reach out if you ever want to talk about anything gaming, open source, or Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so when we talk about open source, let's talk about what that means when we say, what is open source? The actual definition is kind of circular and doesn't really explain it very well, so let's break it down. Um, first, when we talk about it, when we talk about free open source software, we're talking about things that are freely licensed to use, study, copy, modify, change, etc. So these are projects where the source code is openly shared and people are encouraged to voluntarily improve the software by adding new features, documentation, anything that actually helps the project get better. And in the practice, it's software that's built collaboratively with ideally multiple people working towards the same goal. Some projects have more maintainers than others. And of course, hopefully by the end of this, you will be inspired to jump into a project and help out. Um, we also talk about licensing with open source projects for something to be considered free. What that means is that the license is available for you to take the project, take the code, and build on top of it, modify it, use it as part of your own product um, without any restrictions. So not having to worry about doing any sort of payments or anything like that. It's entirely free for you to do with as you would like. And there are specific definitions for what licensing is considered a true open source license. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind as you're evaluating potential projects to either use or participate in. And of course, when we talk about open, what we mean is that that source code is available for anyone and that you're all encouraged to look at it and modify it and get involved. The great thing about open source is that it is usually an idea that one person started with and then someone else decided, let's improve this, let's make this better. And that's how we end up with these amazing open source projects, many of which you are probably using today and you may not even realize. Um, because we have this open aspect and this free to do with aspect, we end up with a lot of open source projects that become the backbone of the internet. An example being something like Linux or Chromium or Postgres. These are all things that you potentially may use every day. And these have become kind of the backbone of various industries because they are open and anyone can build on top of it. You can iterate, you can invest, and then you have this magical ecosystem <laughs> that makes it the industry standard. Um, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not just a you know, absolutely magic, everything's perfect utopia. Open source is all about people. And sometimes that gets messy. And as we've definitely experienced over the past couple of years with the pandemic and how we, most of us had to learn how to work remotely and collaborate with teams across time zones and different global regions, open source is something that uses a lot of those skills. And that does sometimes slow things down, make things a little more difficult. But there are some ways to mitigate that and some things that we can do to actually ensure that open source is a good experience for everyone. Open source is obviously very well used in a lot of big companies. And you'll find that there's a lot of developers that are actively involved in open source and very excited to be working on open source. In fact, a lot of us are very fortunate to be paid to work on open source. Google is, of course, a company that has long invested in open source and others are joining the, the fun and getting as many teams involved in open source as possible, which is amazing. So this is from 2020. Uh, if you're familiar with GitHub, which I imagine a lot of us are, this is a state of the Octoverse survey and it has some you know, basic stats on kind of the involvement and the reach of open source. You can see over 56 million developers have been working on open source with almost 2 billion code contributions. And that's just code. Open source is actually a lot more than just code contributions. But in one year, that's a whole lot of work that got done 
just for open source projects. So there's definitely a lot of interest here, and it's a very exciting thing that a lot of developers want to work on. So let's talk about why it's good for gaming. Um, historically, the games industry is not one that is very transparent and, <laughs> and shares a lot, which kind of goes against what we look at in open source. So there are a few adjustments that you know, have to be made and, and might seem a little scary at first, but let's talk about why it's going to be good and, and why you should be paying attention to this space. So coming at it from a company, what's the advantage? Why should you invest in something like this? Why should you let engineers and, and other people on your staff go work on software that anybody is going to be able to use? Well, one, it's going to help you in the long run because it allows for you to have a wider talent pool. When you think about some of the proprietary tools that we use a lot of times in game development, the number of people that can actually work on that is pretty limited. Um, if you think back to, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there were a lot of specific tools that if you didn't know how to operate that database or that software, you weren't going to get a job. And the pool of people that knew that was getting smaller and smaller, which was a lot harder for you to do hiring. The advantage of using open source and being involved in open source and having your development team familiar with these tools is that suddenly that talent pool is much, much bigger. Again, over 56 million developers in 2020 are working on these. So think of how that has trans transferred to your potential talent pool for hiring. It's a huge advantage for you. The other big advantage for companies, you're setting the standard. You know, we're ten we tend in game development to reinvent the wheel each time we build a game. Um, you know, we have this long development life cycle and we're just going to use the stuff that we built ourselves <laughs> because we know it works and we know it's going to do what we want it to do. But when you work together across the industry and make something the actual industry standard, the advantage is huge. One, you don't have to worry about that anymore. There's no need to rewrite your matchmaking framework for every single game. Do it once. It's great. You can still add new improvements, and there's other people that are working on making it better. It's perfect. And it definitely makes it a lot easier for you to retain your developers and, again, hire more. And ideally, it's going to make your development time that much shorter so we can get those games out the door, which is what we all want. Finally, it'll also help raise your visibility. Obviously, we all want to have the number one game of the year. But in lieu of that, uh, you're able to use open source to raise your visibility across the industry in terms of hiring and technological standards and being able to share with others about the amazing things that your studio is doing. And this can be of benefit to both large studios and small studios, um, particularly for people that are maybe working independently on games. This is a great way to showcase the technology and the you know, human capital you have at your studio by working on open source and, and getting your, your people and your tools out there. So let's talk about open source as an individual. If you're fortunate enough to be hired and actually paid to work on open source, awesome. You're probably all on board with this. If you are working at an independent studio, maybe working on you know, something for a game just out of love, might be a little bit uh, harder to convince yourself to work on this. So let's talk about why. First is you get to build something the ideal way. We all have different definitions of what that means. But the great thing is that if you're using a tool that other people have been using, you know that it's already reliable, but maybe there's something that you just really wish it had in terms of a feature or something in the UI you'd like to change. You can. <laughs> Everything is free for you to contribute to. You'll hear a common expression in open source projects of PRs accepted, which means pull requests, which means anything you want to see in a project, you are welcome to contribute to. Um, so this is actually a really great scenario for those of you who are working with some of these tools. If it's not exactly the way you want it to be, come on, let's fix it, make it better. You make your life easier and improve the lives for so many other game developers, which is just a win-win. And then there's the job security factor. Um, if you're working on open source tools, you're working on stuff that, again, as we've talked about, becomes kind of an industry standard. 
and is applicable across other studios, other projects, even other industries. So you're able to kind of grow the different things that you could potentially work on and the different arenas that you could work in. And this is huge for you. Another reason for you to get involved in open source is the hiring opportunities. Again, you are going to be building your skills and you're going to have more information about a variety of different tools, which has suddenly opened up that many more available positions that you could potentially qualify for or be interested in. You're able to use different parts of your tool set when you're working on an open source project. And this is a great way to try that out and transfer it then to your next job. But of course, nothing is ever truly free. We tend to say in open source that it's free like a puppy. Everybody loves a puppy, um, but then you get it and it's you have to feed it and take it for walks and it barks and fun things like that. So there's definitely work that has to be done and some best practices that you need to put in to make open source successful for yourself and your company. So let's talk about some of that. The number one thing is contributions do not have to be code. I mentioned this earlier. Obviously, we have, you know, billions worth of code changes that are happening on GitHub every year. There's so much more that's happening to make open source successful in both a company perspective or in a project perspective. I am biased, of course, but program managers who work at open source programs offices, very important. There's also the legal team that works on licenses and compliance and makes sure that everything is done correctly when we're working on an open source project. There are people that work in DevRel, community managers, marketing folks. A big one is people that actually can write and do documentation for open source projects. These are all amazing skills that are so much needed across all open source projects and also is another opportunity for you to grow your own skills. Maybe try on a team lead role that you haven't yet. You can definitely work on leading a team for a release of an open source project. A lot of people have used this as a stepping stone to other aspects of their career. So definitely don't think you have to be able to write code to contribute to open source. As with any open source project, when you find one that you want to work on, and of course we have a few, uh, read the contributing guide and then make sure you follow it. Each project is, you know, again, combined of people across different global teams and time zones. And there's a lot that comes with coordinating that and a lot that is done to make sure that everyone's involved. So when you're interested in a project, check out the governance of the project, which is those rules for how things get done. Check out the guidelines and make sure you follow it. Um, once you're in a community and have, you know, really gotten involved, then of course, you know, you can make proposals for things that change. But most projects have kind of a basic framework that's a good place to start and just jump in with that. And then finally, be transparent, which again is not something that is a natural tendency for the games industry. But open source thrives with transparency. It will not work without it. So the most important value is to be aware of the fact that there are people across all over. You can't just turn over to someone at the desk next to you and ask a question. There's going to be folks in different time zones that are asleep while you're working on things or discussing an architecture change, etc. Make sure that you're involved in how these changes are made and communicated and that everyone gets the chance to speak up and make their use cases and opinions known. Get people involved early for feedback and iterations and just try to include as many people as possible. That is going to be key for any open source project. Very quickly, I want to cover some of the examples that we've done in terms of open source at Google Cloud for gaming. You're going to hear more about these the rest of today. First up is Agonis, which is dedicated game server hosting built on top of Kubernetes. Second is OpenMatch, which is a matchmaking framework that we co-developed with Unity. Next up is OpenSaves, which we co-developed with the folks at 2K Games, and that is a cloud native data store for game development. And then our most recent project, which has the 
advantage of having an adorable hedgehog mascot is called Quilkin. And we co-develop, are co-developing that with the great folks at Embark. And that's a non-transparent UDP proxy. And we highly encourage you, come on in, get involved with any of these projects. They're all really exciting and have a great community around them. But of course, there's a lot of other great open source to work on in gaming. Here's some examples. Um, particularly, there's a lot of interesting things happening around open source game engines. So when we talk about having those skills that you can easily transfer to a different company or a different skill set, an open source game engine is going to be great for you to be familiar with. So if you're you know, just considering getting started and not really sure where you want to dive in, highly recommend you check out some of those. And then finally, this is what I live and breathe. <laughs> so anytime you want to talk about open source and gaming and the ways we can, you know, bring more open source to the games industry, I am happy to answer any questions, have any chats. Um, please do reach out. This is something we are very passionate about and definitely happy to help. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm sure you will learn about more open source and get even more inspired to get involved.